Hey everybody, it's Matt Shu from Upright Health and today I wanted to look at two studies very quickly uh, that look at hip injection, um, especially as it relates to people with hip pain. So if you haven't seen it already, we did a video recently with Kristen where we were talking with her about her experience with her diagnostic hip injection, um, how she was told if the hip injection helped relieve her pain, then she would be a good candidate for surgery because a positive response from the hip injection indicates that the problem is happening inside the joint. And so they have to go inside the joint to remove the problems. Um, Kristen has never had the surgery and she is doing very well and is enjoying her life by exercising in a balanced way that helps keep her hips moving well. If you haven't seen that video, um, you may want to check that one out as well because that one just gives you a real human um, story, a real life example of somebody who was told, you know, you've had this hip injection, it was positive, um, so you definitely need surgery. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be a little more of an academic approach to it. Um, this was inspired by a, a YouTube commenter who claimed to be an orthopedic physician who brought up a very good point, which was that hip injections are supposed to be able to tell you what uh, is going on, whether or not the cause of pain is inside the joint or outside the joint. So um, there's two studies that I want to look at to keep this video really short. Um, so I just want to bring up the first one, and it's called Response to Diagnostic Injection in Patients with Femoral Acetabular Impingement, Labral Tears, Chondral Legions, and Extraarticular Pathology. So the idea behind this study was to take people um, who had different hip joint issues and inject their hips and see what the relationship is between the amount of relief they get and their pathologies. So um, they looked at um, FAI, like what kind of FAI. They looked at whether or not the labrum was torn, if it was a little bit, a lot. They looked at chondral pathology, which is cartilage pathology. So is the uh, chondral pathology none, mild, whatever. So, um, oh, also, sorry, uh, mild, uh, they have acetabular delamination, which is uh, something that uh, Kristen was told she had. Um, all that good stuff. So they're looking at those as intraarticular problems, as intraarticular, uh, sorry, as intraarticular, as extraarticular. They're looking at IT band snapping, iliopsoas, tendinopathy, or bursitis. Only those three different things are they actually considering possible extraarticular causes of hip pain, which I think uh, is actually too limited. It, it's not looking at all kinds of other things. It's sort of assuming, uh, assuming that those three things encompass the grand scheme of what can go wrong with a hip, and I think that's actually too limited. Um, in any case, um, the idea was if you do the injection and you have somebody who has some severe intraarticular problems, they should get more relief. It's, it kind of makes sense, right? If, if, if the hip injection is supposed to be specific and useful and help you determine whether the problem is coming from inside the hip joint, then people should get people with problems in the hip joint should get more relief than the people whose problems are outside of the hip joint, right? So the, the bursitis and the, the uh, tendinopathies and all that stuff, right? So um, here's what they found. Uh, the presence and severity of FAI and labral pathology did not influence the percent relief from injection. Um, concurrent extra articular pathology did not alter the interpretation of the percent relief from injection. So basically they're saying it really doesn't matter how severe the things were on the inside, um, didn't seem to relate to how much relief you got. Also, um, the fact that there was other stuff going on outside the joint also didn't seem to affect how much relief you got. It doesn't seem like those things uh, were related. So that's a clue right off the bat that's um, the hip injections are not actually telling you as much as um, may be believed. Now, um, there's some other details in here that I will highlight actually um, another day, maybe not online, but uh, not on YouTube, but on a uh, 
on a separate write-up. But um, this next study is called Preoperative Intraarticular Hip Injection as a Predictor of Short-Term Outcome Following Arthroscopic Management of Femoral Acetabular Impingement. So this one is really important if somebody has ever told you, hey, if you respond well to this um, uh, hip injection, that makes you a good candidate for a good outcome for, for uh, surgery. So <clears throat> that's what they were basically looking at in this study. And so they looked at people who had um, FAI and they wanted to see what, what would happen if they did the uh, hip joint injection and what would happen if w whether or not the positive response or negative responses seem to correlate with a positive response to a subsequent surgery or a negative response to a subsequent surgery. And so uh, from the conclusion, uh, the data suggests that a re positive response from an intraarticular hip injection is not a strong predictor of short-term functional outcomes following arthroscopic management of femoroacetabular impingement. However, a negative response from an intraarticular hip injection may predict a higher likelihood of having a negative result from surgery. So to clarify, this is actually saying if you have a negative response from the uh, hip injection, meaning you don't get relief, that is in, an indicator that surgery is probably not going to be helpful. It seems to be a, at least a kind of weak to moderate indicator that surgery will not actually give you uh, relief in the short term. Um, it also is telling you that even if you have a positive response to a hip injection, that is not predictive of you having a positive response in the short term following surgery. So essentially what both of these studies are saying is there's a, a ton of ambiguity um, in terms of what a hip injection actually tells you, right? So while it may be presented to people that a positive response to a hip injection means surgery is going to be good for you, this study actually uh, points in the exact opposite direction. And they have actually a, a, <clears throat> a quote in here that I just want to read. They say, these results have important clinical implications as both the surgeon and patient might assume that a positive response to an intraarticular hip injection will lead to satisfactory surgical outcomes, which would be contrary to the results of this study. Um, <clears throat> orthopedic surgeons should be mindful that it is not necessarily predictive of FAI surgical outcomes and patients need to be informed. So this is a really interesting study because it's essentially saying those hip injections are not telling you what you think they're telling you. Um, and while people may think that uh, this positive response means surgery is going to be good, there actually isn't evidence based on this study to show that that is the case. So I wanted to make this video and get this out quickly so people have access to this information. Um, I will provide the links uh, in the YouTube description. If you, are, if you want to pay for access to these things, they are um, hidden behind paywalls. Um, if you're at a university, you may be able to access, uh, access some of these things for free. Um, so anyway, go ahead and check these out. The abstracts do give you a lot of the good information. Um, and uh, hopefully this gives you a little bit of a different perspective on what hip injections mean, what they might mean for you, uh, especially if you're trying to make some hard decisions about your own body. So uh, I hope this helps you, and I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.